स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू डे टू टू डेज लेक्चर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द हाइड्रोजन एटम्स एनर्जी लेवल्स एंड एमिशन स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एटम एंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड दैट द एनर्जी लेवल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एटम वेर एन स्क्वायर फोल्ड डी जेनरेट टूडे वी डिस्कस अबाउट द हाइड्रोजन एटम्स आइगन फंक्शन टू रिमाइंड यू द आइगन फंक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एटम दैट वी हैड वी एक्सप्रेस दैम इन टर्म्स ऑफ दिस साई as a function of r theta and phi and the indices that it depended on are n l and m where the total wave function is given by two quant two different functions one radial function which depended on n and l and the angular function which depended on l and m the angular functions are the simple spherical harmonics that we have discussed in in case of angular momentum operators eigen values and the radial functions that we uh, dis we derived in the course of our discussion are given over here where it has 1 over r rho to the power l plus 1 where rho is the dimensionless coordinate given by z over an where a is bohr's radius and n is the uh, quantum number that uh goes from 1 2 3 uh, so on and so forth r is your uh, internal coordinate so and again l is the angular momentum of the uh, of the electron this quantity and this quantity we obtained by from the asymptotic solution of the uh, radial wave function and then we have this main body of the solution where j where the main body of the solution is expressed in, as a power series expansion where j goes from 0, 0 to n j max and j max is given as n minus l minus 1 so here uh, to remind you n goes from uh, n as 1 2 3 so on so forth for a given value of n the l go l value goes as from 0 1 2 until n minus 1 and for a given value of l m goes from minus l to plus l in the step of 1 so therefore for a given value of n i have n number of l values and for a given value of l i have 2l plus 1 number of m values together i see that for an energy with energy level of en uh, which was given as minus 13.6 z square by n square the energy level depended only on n quantum number whereas for for an energy level of en i have n square number of eigen functions possible for this now we would uh, discuss what are these eigen functions and how we can write them so here i have expressed only the radial part we would for the time being will not consider the angular uh, part of the solution because we already know the properties of the angular part of the solution the angular parts is are given by the spherical harmonics which we have obtained in their normalized forms so we can simply discuss now the radial part and at a later point of time we will combine the radial and angular solution to obtain the full solution but before we do that we we'll, let us understand a few more things about the radial part of the solution so this is the radial general form of the radial part of the solution where b is a at the coefficients which are given by this expression that we have uh, derived now for will for n equals 1 we have the possible values of l is it goes from 0 to n minus 1 and n minus 1 is 0 so only one value of l is possible that is l equals 0 and given that l is 0 there is only one possible value of m that is also 0 so now we have this wave function psi 1 0 0 r theta phi where this is first is n l m which is r n l depends on r and y 0 0 depends on theta phi 
we know this y 0 0 this was simply 1 by 4 pi under square root which is which was a constant and we would now look at what is this r 1 0. So, now we have for n equals 1 the energy is simply minus 13.6 electron volt for hydrogen atom and I have got only one solution one eigenfunction corresponding to that and I call that psi 1 0 0. For n equals 2 I have two values of L that is L goes from 0 to n minus 1 which is 0 and 1 these are the two values. But for L equals 0 again I have 12 plus 1 number of m values that is since L is 0 12 plus 1 is 1 and that I have only one value of m and that is m equals 0 and the function that I have is psi 2 0 0 as a function of r theta and phi. This again I can write down as r 2 0 r y 0 0 theta phi. You see both in 1 0 0 and 2 0 0 I have the same angular function operating and the its energy is minus 3.4 electron volt for hydrogen atom. Now, when L equals 1 I have 12 plus 1 number of m values. So, therefore, m goes from a 0 or plus minus 1. So, there are 3, three labels here how would I write them? I would write them as psi to 1 1, psi to 1 0, psi to 1 minus 1. Say this is n same for all 3, l again same for all 3, all the 3 functions they differ by their m values. How would I write this? I will write this r 2 1 r y 1 1. r 2 1 y 1 0 r 2 1 y 1 minus 1 theta phi. So, you see these three quantities these three eigen functions have same radial part because the radial part depends only on n and l, but they have three different angular fun, uh, functions y 1 1, y 1 0, y 1 minus 1 and we have already seen in our uh, previous discussion on the angular momentum eigen functions what are the functional forms of y 1 1, 1 0, 1 minus 1 just to remind you they would have explicit dependence on theta and phi coordinates. Now, what are the energies corresponding to this? energies of these labels will depend only on n and we see that this, this and this all these three function as well as psi 2 0 0 all these four functions have same n value. So, therefore, their energies are same minus 3.4 electron volt. So, there are four labels of four functions of same energy here and here E n equals minus 13.6 I had only one function. So, now I see that for n equals 2 I have four functions. So, therefore, this energy level is fourfold degenerate. When I look at n equals 3 you can very well do the same uh, exercise you would find that I have 9 levels of uh, degeneracy that E 3 will be 9 fold degenerate. Now, there is a shorthand note notation for these wave functions. Instead of writing this psi 2 1 1, psi 2 1 0, psi 2 minus 1, we have a shorter way of uh, writing this wave function. Uh, this is what we know as atomic orbitals. For example, when n equals 1, we call that 1 and correspond then we look at L value. So, we call this n as the principal quantum number. L is the azimuthal quantum number because it corresponds to the azimuth the, the, the angular momentum uh, coordinate and um, m is your magnetic quantum number and why we call this magnetic m as magnetic quantum number we will we'll, we'll, uh, discuss uh, in a few classes. So, 
n equals 1, l equals 0, m equals 0, we simply give, a, give it as 1 s, s represents l equals 0. l equals 1 is given as p, so this label we have 2 s and this label when n is 2, l is 1, we have 2 p. And for l equals 1, I have 3 possible values of m, so 2 p plus 1, 2 p minus 1, 2 p 0, 2 p 0. So, these are written down in, in complex form, but we, we would also see that we can convert them to uh, real uh, form and in that case we will call them 2 p x, 2 p y, 2 p z. So, they represent two, uh, some, some linear combination of these functions would actually give you 2 p x, 2 p y, 2 p z that you know. So, we have 2 s and 2 p or uh, x to p y to p z these are the four functions. Similarly, for 3 we have 3 s, 3 p, 3 p will have 3 levels and 3 d where l because for n equals 3 l can be 0 or 1 or 2. So, this will be called 3 s, this will be called 3 p and this will be called 3 d. 3 d label will have 5 fold degeneracy because they will have m as plus minus 2, plus minus 1, plus and 0 and for 3 p m values will be plus minus 1 and 0 and for 3 s m value is 0. So, if you count them together we will have 9 different functions and they are 3 s, 3 p, 3 d and so on. But you see for hydrogen atom the energy levels 3 s, 3 p, 3 d they have same energy, 2 s, 2 p they have same energy, 1 s has uh, uh, has, a, has a different energy compared to 2 s and, and 3 s. And you see that when I go to 4, n equals 4, n equals 5 and so on and so forth, the energy levels will be uh, the degeneracy, degree of degeneracy of these energy levels will keep on increasing, but I will I'll have only, I can only distinguish energy levels according to n quantum number or principal uh, quantum number. So, for hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom that means, when I have helium plus or lithium plus uh, 2 plus and so on. So, the lowest energy level is 1 fold degenerate, the second energy level is 2 fold degenerate because this corresponds to 2 s 2 p, this is 1 s. The third one will be 3 s 3 p 3 d. 9 fold is in it, but this energy, this way of writing energy level is true only for hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom when there is only one electron. When only when there is only one electron, you have this kind of degeneracy. When you have not hydrogen like atom, for example, helium without a plus charge or lithium or any other. Uh, high heavier elements where you have more than one electron, this beautiful degeneracy that we see in hydrogen atom is no longer there. And from your atomic structure knowledge that you already uh, are aware that you would see that 1s will have the lowest energy, then 2s and 2p while they were degenerate in case of hydrogen atom, they will no longer be degenerate for heavier atoms. So, this will be 2 s, this will be 2 p. So, that the 2 s will be again 1 fold degenerate, 2 p will be 3 fold degenerate. So, these 4 levels will split into 2, one will have 1 level, another will have 3 levels and similarly you will have 3 s, 3 p, 3 d, they will also split in energy. This is true for all systems which have more than one electron where the energy levels can be given as n can be identified as n plus l in rather than only n n. For only for one electronic system we have this kind of degeneracy, but for other system where we have more than one electron the degeneracy pattern is changing. For example, if I ask what is the degree of degeneracy of the second level of hydrogen atom and the second level of helium atom. Second level of hydrogen atom will be this one because this is the first energy level, this is the second energy level. The degeneracy of this level is 3 plus 1 4, but when I look here helium atom the second energy level is this one 
and this one is, is a non-degenerate or the degree of degeneracy is, is 1. So, we have to keep this in mind that this kind of degeneracy is applicable only for one electronic system. All right. Now, we have come to a point where we would see that we want would we would want to write down the functional forms of this radial functions. To do that, we will do for we will first take n value of 1 and since n value is 1, I have only one value of L possible and that is 0. So, I am writing down the I will try to write down the functional form of this radial function of 1 over r 1 0 and then I look at the right hand side I have 1 over r rho to the power L plus 1 what is L? L is 0. So, therefore, this will be simply rho, but what is rho? Rho is z over a n r, but we, I already know that n is 1. So, therefore, I need not write this n over here because n is 1. So, therefore, rho becomes z over a r rho to the power L plus 1 L is 0. So, this is simply this quantity e to the power minus rho and then I have sum. How many terms would I have in this summation? I, my, j goes from 0 to n minus L minus 1. n is 1, L is 0 and therefore, n minus L minus 1 is 0. So, j goes from 0 to 0 that means only one term and I will have a single term and that is B 0. To If I simplify this, this r and r they cancel out. So, I have B 0 which is the coefficient over here I do not know its value z over a e to the power minus z over a r. So, this is the radial solution of hydrogen atoms 1 s orbital. What, what, what functional form does it have? It has some constant we still do not know what is z over a z is the nuclear charge which is 1 a is the Bohr's radius which is 0 0.529 angstrom. So, this is again a constant. So, together these are these are constants and what I have is simply an exponentially decaying function where the, the exponent is minus z over a r. Now, we still we see that we have one unknown in this function that is b 0. We need to find out that value of b 0. How would I do that? When I have a function that is that is going to define the state of the system, I know that this function should be normalizable. So, now I will try to normalize this function and then by normalizing this anyway I would I would be able to find one constant and that b 0 value will come out from there. So, I would now show the normalization procedure here. Please pay attention there is an important uh, point that you must remember when you normalize this radial function. So, my task at, task at hand is to normalize this function. So, therefore, I wrote the square of this function psi star psi. What are the what is the coordinate? The coordinate is r which is the distance between the nucleus and the electron which goes from 0 to infinite and then I have to integrate. So, the volume integral that I will have is r square d r. Often students make mistake by writing here only d r and that would be wrong. Just to remind you we had the volume integral d tau in Cartesian coordinate we wrote d x d y d z that was all right in the Cartesian coordinate, but when we came to spherical uh, system spherical coordinates this d x d y d z converted into r square d r sin theta d theta and d phi. So, when I am integrating a radial function my volume integral is not d r alone rather it is r square d r. When I am integrating a theta function in the uh, theta the azimuthal angle. So, in this case the volume integral is not d theta this is sin theta d theta. This we used when we are normalizing the Eigen functions of angular momentum operator. When I normalize a phi uh, dependent function I have only d phi. So, this is very important to remember. Since we are only discussing the radial part of the solution our angular part is separately normalized. So, therefore, I am going to normalize only al along uh, this radial coordinate. So, I have this r square dr as the volume uh, integral. 
So, now I would see 0, infinite, 0 to infinite r square and then the square of this function which is where I see b 0 is a constant and uh, so b 0 square z over a square these two uh, constants I take it take them out and the square of this function is simply minus. Now, we have to solve this integral to do that we will uh, take help of uh, a relation where you can see when I have a function x to the power n e to the power minus q of x the result of that is simply factorial n divided by q raised to the power uh, raised to n plus 1 where q has to be positive that means this exponent function must be negative which is the case here and n must be an integer greater than minus 1. So, here n is 2 because I see here x to the power n e to the power minus q x. So, here n is 2 and q is simply 2 z divided by a. So, the result of this let me first write down the constants that we have result of this integral is fact 2 factorial which is 2 n factorial divided by q which is 2 z divided by a raised to the raised to n plus 1 since n is 2 I have this to the power 3. Now, when I simplify this I see b 0 square I have here z over a square and here z over a cube. that gives me z over a here and you see 2 to the power 3 uh, and 2 they, they give me 1 by 4 and this quantity if this function has to be normalized this quantity should be 1 and how is that going to be that is going to be if my b 0 is simply this quantity. Now, I obtain the value of v 0 by normalizing this function. So, what would be the normalized function r 1 0? This function will simply be 2 I have z over a to the power half here z over a. So, the function is 3 by 2 and an exponentially decaying function. So, you see here I have a constant because z is nuclear charge a is Bohr's radius so and 2 is a constant. So, this is a constant multiplied by an exponentially decaying function. So, if I plot this function r goes from z r goes from 0 to infinite you will see this will be simply an exponentially decaying function for large value of r this function will become 0. and this is uh, this would be within this limit this would be a well behaved function. So, I now have an idea about how r 1 0 looks like. So, now what we would do is that we would uh, discuss the next function that is when I take r n as 2 and I consider l is 0. So, that is 2 0. So, here again. So, n is 2, l is 0, 1 over r, rho is z over a n. So, z over 2 a, n is 2 here. So, that is why I am writing 2. This is raised to the power l plus 1, l is 0. So, raised to the power l plus 1 that means simply this quantity z over 2 a into r, e to the power minus rho which is simply z over 2 a r and j equals 0 this summation the, the power series will have going from j equals 0 to n minus l minus 1 n is 2 l is 0. So, therefore, this will have j equals 0 term and j equals 1 term. So, j equals 0 means b 0 j equals 1 means b 1 rho rho is of course, z a by n. So, now I see here r and r will cancel out. So, I have z over 2 a e to the power minus z by 2 a 
r and then I have this b0 plus b1 rho. How do I get this b0 and b1? Remember when we had one s problem, we had only one unknown b0. If I had only one unknown, I could have normalized this function and obtained that. But here I have two unknowns b0 and b1. So, therefore, I cannot only normalize the function and uh, obtain the full solution rather I have to find one more way. What would be that way? I know that b0 and b1 are related to each other through this recursion relation. So, now we will dis dis obtain what is b1 in terms of b0. So, I see I wrote down at the left hand side b1 that means I am considering j equals 0. So, b1 will be some function something some constant multiplied by b0 where the value of this constant is given by this relation. Let us find this out. So, 2 j since j I am talking about b0 to b1. So, therefore, j is 0 l I am talking about 2 0 function. So, l is 0 plus 1 minus 2 n what is n? n is 2. So, therefore, this is minus 4 divided by j plus 1 that is 1 j is 0. So, multiplied by 2 l which is 0 j which is 0 2. So, you see we have 2 minus 4. So, that is minus 2 divided by 2. So, you would see this is minus b 0. So, we have b 1 related to b 0. How is it? That b 1 is simply minus b 0. So, therefore, I write here b 0 and in place of b 1 I write minus b 0 rho and I now I can remove this b 0 out of this and I have z over 2 a 1 minus rho and I can put this rho as z over 2 a r e to the power minus z over 2 a r. Now, I see of course, b 0 value is not known. I can normalize this function to get obtain b 0 and to normalize this function I would simply be using uh, this relation over here to uh, do the normalization. And suppose I have by b 0 which will be a constant and this is a constant. Now, I look at this functional form of this 2 s function. What do I see? I see an exponentially decaying function and a polynomial. This polynomial, so if I draw now the function as uh, from r goes to 0 to, to a very large value, I would see that this would have been uh, an exponentially decaying function, but it is multiplied by a, by a polynomial where this value can have a value, this, this term can become 0. How would, when would it this become 0? This will become 0 when z over 2 a into r is 1 or r a r is 2 a over z and for hydrogen atom when z is 1 this is over 2 a. So, at this value 2 a over z this function has to become 0 and for larger value of when r is greater than 2 a by z this term will become greater than 1. So, this function will become negative. So, for r equals 0 I will have this term becoming 0. So, I will have exponentially decaying function. So, this will keep on decaying until 2 a plus z and then this function will become 0 and then it will become negative because the second term is greater than the first term and but it would be becoming negative, but then I see for larger value of r the exponential function will take over will dominate and then this will pull it up and the function will become 0. So, now I see that the r 2 0 function will have a at a particular value of r will develop a node. So, this is a radial node. Remember, we did not experience that radial node in case of 1 s uh, function, but for 2 s function we experience this radial node at the value of 2 a over z, but at large value of r this function tends to 0. We will continue our discussion with the other eigenfunctions of hydrogen atom in our next class. Thank you for your attention.